так. Ну хорошо, значит, э, значит, я сегодня поговорю про э, поверхностный дефект. Да. А, ah, okay. So, uh, so my goal today is to explain uh, the formula for the wave function of uh, the periodic of the periodic toller chain uh, is a su surface defect in n equals two d equals four u n. Gauge theory uh, oh. is, a, is a wave function of the periodic to, to the chain in uh, under certain assumptions. So we have yes, it's a, uh, so it's a, it's a quantum mechanical problem. So this is. I have n particles, and uh, I will extend them to an infinite array of particles with the, with the n periodicity of the coordinates. And uh, with the pot interaction potential of this form. This letter omega is because uh, uh, so omega will label irreducible representations of uh, of the cyclic group. Um, uh, why do I call it omega? Actually, it's, it's a good question. I, I don't I don't remember. <laughs> it's a notation which I adopted a long time ago. And, Maybe, yes. Yeah, but uh, I'm, I'm not that, uh, it, it was not that, that thoughtful, maybe. It's, uh, so, uh, so the idea is to, s to start, so, okay, so wh what do we do? We take the modular space of uh, instantons, uh, so this is the, uh, of un charge k instantons on non-commutative r4 and uh, we make we, we consider a specific action of the group zn uh, so zn acts uh, on r4 and uh, on the color space. So if you think about this space as the, uh, the modular space of representations of this quiver, the, uh, so the group uh, Zn acts on the matrices following way that the generator let's say var pi of of uh, of this group sends the quadruple b1 b2 i and j to b1 the nth root of unity times b2 um, i times h uh, omega inverse h omega e to the 2 pi uh, squared minus 1 over n j where h 
So H is the representation Zn into Un, which is the uh, a regular representation. So H sub omega is a diagonal matrix. Of course, it's some basis. With eigenvalues, uh, all possible roots of units. So, uh, so now, uh, so let, so now, so now let's let's consider the space of Z and invariant instantons. So the, those which are invariant are this action, and I claim so. And then. Uh, the, uh, we can send this. We can so the the idea is that so this space will split into various components labeled by different ways of splitting the charge into the sum of fractional charges. So K. I, I will re recall how the splitting occurs. So this is the well, this place is defect with, the, with various charges. And my claim is that every, every component maps to the modular space of to the ordinary modular space of instantons with the charge uh, one of these charges. So I'll, I'll choose k minus one. So you, can, you can choose your favorite. And uh, the point is that, so this map is interpreted the, as the insertion of an operator in the ordinary gauge theory on, uh, on R4. So, the, uh, so, so in other words, the so integ integration over the modular space, which I, I call the modular space with defect of something is is the same thing as the expectation value in the ordinary theory of the surface defect times the the uh, the operator so here the defect was defined in terms of the space r4 theta and here the gauge theory lives on the quotient which is the uh, so it's another copy of R4, which is the original space divided by the cyclic group. Now, uh, so th since geometrically, so th the geometric part of this action, uh, y you read off the, the action on the matrices B1 and B2, which represent the space-time coordinates, the holomorphic coordinates. So if you think about of the space C2, let, let, let me call this the space cover. And this space, which is in the complex, in the, in the, in, as a complex manifold, it's, it's as a, isomorphic to, to C2. So this is cover. So the map is simply uh, raising the second coordinate to the power n. So this is what forgets about this, this action multiplication by the n of units here. And uh, so now, what I'm saying is that the theory, my the theory defined on that space, with the prescription that of all uh, fields of that theory, I only keep the ZN variant ones, is the same thing as the ordinary gauge theory on the on the base space in the presence of this of a defect. Defect is so in this way, the defect is defined implicitly. So the plane of defect, the plane of defect, is is the ramification divisor of this map. So this is this is z two equals to zero. So the defect is along the the z one plane. Or c one one, and it's localized at the 
would be conical singularity of the C2, C1, 2 plane. So this is where the defect is. And so this, uh, this star represents the fact that we, we, we divide by Zn, actually. Uh, now, in order to make this work, you need to smooth it out, so introduce some metric which, which closes the conical singularity into a kind of a cup. And all this can be done. You can introduce the parameters. You can deform this space, just like the uh, maybe in a more familiar case when you consider the instantons on a Lee space, the space which is uh, asymptotically looks like the orbifold of C2 by the action of some uh, finite subgroup of SU2, you can start by defining just the locus of uh, the, the uh, group invariant instantons on, on, on the covering space, and then you can smooth it out by introducing the the parameters in moment map equation, which I will now uh, introduce. And so from and and, and then uh, the actual uh, differential geometric object will will live on a smooth space. Yes. 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 On this level. So we want. So the, we, what we want, we want. So we want to compute the generating function of all, of these integrals of the usual class one over the defect with some uh, generating parameters. And my claim is that after some change of variables, this will be the the wave function, the eigen function of of this operator. Is the eigen function of this operator, and then. Uh, by playing with equivariant parameters, we can uh, uh, achieve the normalizability of this wave function. Is it a function? So, as I just said, by playing with equivariant parameters, we can achieve the normalizability of this wave function. That it's for this equation, what you're looking for, you're looking for the wave function, which is in L2 of uh, Rn minus 1, when all is with. You can, by playing, you can, you can make another game, and you can make them live on the periodic. So you can make this variables periodic. Then uh, this is not the, uh, for n greater than 2, this is not the conventional formulation of the problem, because the potential is actually uh, complex valued. But it still, it still makes perfect sense as a spectral problem. Um, and you can also consider various mixed cases. So, so, it's, so there are different, so there are uh, many possible quantization conditions, many pro pro possible quantization problems which are, uh, which correspond to the same complex or algebraic integral system, which is the classical limit of that mod model. And in s in so in some sense, all these quotations are uh, to different ways of treating, treating these uh, generating functions. Uh, OK? So. Uh, Vector k takes an infinite number of values. So here k actually is uh, in Zn greater than or equal to 0. Uh, just as in the ordinary, in the, in the absence of the surface defect, we were studying the generating function with, with summed over all instanton charges. So that was the z function, which was the function of the Coulomb modular, the uh, torus equivariant parameters and the fugacity for the instant on charge. Now this fugacity got uh, fraction, I mean fractionalized because the charge is fractionalized, and uh, the connection of this f those fugacities to these parameters is very simple. Uh, it's just. I will slightly change the normalization. I will 
uh, write this as uh, the first sum, the first n minus 1 term without any prefactor, and then the last term with the uh, with these coefficients. So it's, it's this normalization is sometimes more convenient for studying the uh, limit to the open order. Open, open to order and, and perturbative. Yes. Absolutely, yes, yes, yes. So, so the relation between these fugacities and the coordinates of Toda is, is very simple. So for omega going from 0 to n minus 2, this is just this exponent. And then the last one is lambda to the 2n. So that the product of all uh, fractional fugacities is equal to the bulk fugacity. And now, f in f from, from the in in physical uh, uh, viewpoint, is that this defect supports a kind of a two-dimensional Siegel model, which uh, which is approximately the Siegel model valued in the in uh, uh, the space of complete flux in in n-dimensional vector space, and so then these additional additional fugacities are the uh, instanton couplings for this two-dimensional Siegel model. Now, uh, in this picture, so uh, the, the idea is that if I now represent the integral of 1 over the defect space, I uh, compute this integral in two steps. First, I do the push forward of 1 from that space to that space, and then integrate over the base space. And so in this formulation, it, uh, it looks like we're integrating over the ordinary modular space of instantons some observable. And so that observable, if I sum now over all, so here I sum over uh, all k vector. with this prefactor. And here I want to take the sum in two steps. So first I. Uh, first, I sum over k0, k, n minus 2. Sorry, uh, prefactor is here, q omega, k omega minus k, n minus 1. And then here I put lambda of the n to the k, n minus 1. And so the sum. The sum uh, over k0, kn minus 2 product e to the x omega. So this pi, of course, map depends on, uh, depends on the vector k because it depends on from which space we start. So this is the the surface defect as a function of auxiliary variables x. So this is the, now the class, the covariant cohomology class uh, on m k n minus 1 n. So it's, so it's some class, some complicated class of equivalent cohomology of the ordinary instanton modular space, which depends on, on auxiliary parameters x. What are properties of morphism pi? Like, is it raw? Let, uh, we'll, we'll, let's let's uh, study it now, actually. I have to define it first. Let's, let's define this map. In order to define this map. So, so simple question. Yes. Yes, yes. What is Okay, so in uh, physically you cap so you, you couple two dimensional theory to four dimensional theory, you integrate out the degrees of freedom of two dimensional theory, you get some operator in the four dimensional theory, which depends on the, the couplings of two dimensional theory. The x variables are the couplings the, like complexified theta angles 
of the two-dimensional theory. So when you integrate out all the x is a complexified theta angle. Yes, complexified theta angle is that is that, is that thing. So it's theta plus i the final for the for the sigma model valued in in that space. You have n minus one such properties. And so these variables, uh, well, the differences of x, the n minus one dif non-trivial difference of x, correspond to the. Uh, yes, but uh, you can see. So, in, in uh, of course, for the total chain, I mean, there is a center of mass which sort of decouples, and uh, the, diff the, the only interesting things are differences. Uh, OK, so now let's describe this map. So the base moduli space has, has this description when we sub matrix B1, B2, I, J, and K. Now, if we want to implement the, the Zn projection, uh, this is done uh, in a standard way. So the space N splits. Is a sum of uh, one-dimensional irreducible representations with one-dimensional multiplicities. So these are uh, irreps of the cyclic group. Now the fact that uh, the configuration i j b one b two is invariant under the Zn action, it is only invariant under some automorphism of the space K, because that's what we divide by. And so the, the assignment of this automorphism for every element of Zn gives a representation of Zn in the k space. So the k space also splits where now these spaces may have non-trivial multiplicities. And these are these little k omega. These are these fractional charges. And so the picture, uh, the picture is the so-called, uh, I keep forgetting, I think it's called the CSOP quiver. Uh, uh, yes, so, so, so OK, let's, let's draw it as follows. So we arrange the representations of Zn in the affine linking diagram cyclically. So now we have the spaces k0, k1, k2, kn minus 1. Uh, and now we have, so the operator B1, uh, the, the, the matrix B1 was, uh, did not get affected by the action of Zn. So the B1 will split into a collection of operators which act in, the, in these individual spaces. So let's call them B1 omega, which maps k omega to itself, while B2 will act between the spaces, so B2 omega, so this is B1 0, this is B2 0, we'll map K omega to K omega plus 1. This is just an implementation of this following that B1 is equal to uh, G omega B1 G omega inverse and B2 times uh, square root of, uh, sorry, times e to the 2 pi square root of minus 1 over n is equal to. So this space is k sub omega is, is, you wish, is the eigenspaces of the compensating transformation g omega. So g omega is in u k. Uh, it represents the action of Zn. So g omega to the n is equal to 1. And k sub omega is the kernel of g omega minus e to the 2 pi square root of minus 1 omega over n. And so if I did make a mistake, uh, the operator b2 will uh, have to shift the, uh, shift the eigenvalue of g omega by, by 1 so, so square root unit. So that's why b2 acts in this way. Uh, now, to make these transformations consistent with the 
the ADHM equation, the commutator of B1, B2 plus Ij equals to zero, we also uh, make the group Zn act on the matrices I and J. And the usual assignment is that I is not, so I is neutral and J has the same weight one as B2. And so uh, now my framing space N also splits into the components like here and zero and one and N minus one and so on. So N one and now the framing maps. So the I maps will be, will preserve the index omega. One. And the J maps will, which will act uh, also while raising. So this is J zero. This is J n minus one, uh, and so on. So, so this part is is the tooth of the of this seesaw. So this is chainsaw. 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 Sorry, seesaw is a mechanism. Chainsaw is a tooth. Right? Chainsaw. Chainsaw. Yes. So this is the. So I think this is all uh, contained in in uh, uh, Finkelberg and Ribnikov, uh, but uh, uh, now we'll we'll try to compute something by integrating over the space using the uh, the tools, the other tools other than chainsaw. So <laughs> OK, good. Uh, now, the, the, the point is that uh, in, in, uh, we, when we make the computations using localization, we use the maximal torus of the rotation group, which is, U, which is U1 cross U1 rotation group torus let's say, with parameters q1 and q2, which act separately on b1 and b2. And uh, so the fixed points of that torus action combined with the framing uh, plus v1 to the n, which will assume, uh, so we assume that this torus acts uh, preserving the structure. So each of these one-dimensional spaces is the eigenspace of, of, of that torus. So the fixed points are actually uh, uh, the same because the group Zn, which we use to, to specify uh, to, uh, to this decomposition, is actually a subgroup of that group. So we describe the, uh, the embedding into this torus and into this torus. So now I want to describe the map uh, kind of a, a map from, from this space of matrices. So this, the matrices now are so, so the, okay, so the, this defect modular space, the component which depends on k vector is the space of our collections of matrices B1, B1 omega so B1 omega acts from k omega to itself, b2 omega acts from k omega to k omega plus 1, i omega maps n omega to k omega, and j omega maps uh, k omega to n omega plus 1. So we impose the following equation. Uh, the equation is, is a projection. It's a projection of that equation onto, onto the is a typical components of the Zn decomposition. Uh, so the equation is, uh, let's see. So it's b1 omega plus 1 b2 omega. So I'm computing the commutator. I'm trying to, to make the, uh, to go from this space to this space. First, I apply this map, and then I make a loop here, or I can apply this map and then go this way. So minus b2 omega b1 omega. 
plus. Now let's try to do this using the ij maps. So I can first go using j. So j will send me to n plus 1, n omega plus 1. Then I can uh, apply i omega plus 1. So, like this one. so the sum of this map plus this map is equal to this map times this map. So that's the no, projected ADHM equation. For every omega, and then there will be there are some uh, real map equations which I will uh, not write here. I will write them for the other uh, quiver which we will obtain from this one. Effectively, I just say plus stability conditions. So, so there is one stability. What's the dimension of this space? Uh, well. Uh, OK, we can compute it. It's, uh, so uh, the, uh, the number of parameters in the B1 matrix is k omega squared. The number of parameters in B2 matrix is k omega times k omega plus 1. The number of parameters in I is n omega times k omega. The number of parameters in J is n plus 1 times k. Okay, so this is the sum from 0 to n minus 1. Uh, again, there is a cyclic, cyclic invariance. So k omega plus n is equal to k omega. In fact, this little n is equal to 1 in, 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 in my case. Uh, but uh, let's keep it general for the moment. And then we subtract the equations. So we have. Uh, th these equations take values in the maps from, from, the, uh, from the k omega space to k omega plus 1. So that effectively takes care of this dimension. And then uh, we divide by the action of the group uh, uh, of the groups uh, GLK omega. So that takes care of this dimension. And so the, the dimension is, is just this. Uh, So it's k omega times n omega plus n omega n plus 1. So if, if all n's are equal to 1, which is what I do here, this is called the regular defect. This is just twice the sum of the um, k omega. It's a complex dimension. I think uh, that's what, uh, what it is. Um, so it looks like uh, there might be some. So there might be some subtleties with the uh, u1 factors, which which uh, which I might be missing. But uh, so for large k, this is the. So it looks like that for large k, this space has. Uh, uh, so this is to be compared with the uh, with the dimension of the space in which this is a Zn invariant locus. So this is sitting inside the space M, the sum of charges, and the sum of Ns, which has dimension twice N times the sum of Ks. So this is a kind of a sm much smaller space. But now I want to s project it to the. Uh, I mean, we physically, we should, the, what we should expect is that all these fractional charges are approximately equal to each other. The, there is some, uh, there is some uh, kind of mean value, and, and so the individual dimensions can go up higher or lower, but there is, a, there is some mean value of k. So this is approximately twice n the mean value of k. And so that space has the dimension which is equal to the dimension of the ordinary modular space of instantons of the mean k dimension. And so that justifies, sort of justifies, the, the, the desire to map the space of instantons with defect to the ordinary modular space of instantons. But now, instead of taking some average, which is a kind of tricky operation, uh, I actually pick one of these k's, 
and, and map to this space. So this is how I do it. I will now produce out of a solution of these addition equations a solution to this equation, the, the old equation. So my, so my map looks as follows. I will take as a space k nu, I will just take k n minus 1. And my n nu is just the sum of these n spaces. I forget about, so now um, the new space doesn't bear any action of the n, so, so we just forget about these representations. Uh, to do things properly equivalently, I actually will have to, I'll, I'll have to twist the spaces by some character of the rotation torus, but uh, that's a minor detail but for the moment. So now the maps are the following. The, uh, the map B1 nu is the only thing which you can do in this case, namely it's B1 and minus 1. You just take the this arrow which you have for free. Uh, but now B2 so B2 has to be a map which again acts uh, sends this space to itself and there is a natural candidate namely you take a product of all these errors. So it's B2 uh, n minus 2, b2 n minus 3, all the way b2 n minus 1. So b2 1, and then, uh, sorry, uh, b, yes, n minus 2 is the last one, and the first one is b2 n minus 1. So I claim that there are maps i and j, which, which you can put here, which will solve the equation um, Well, it's not so difficult to figure it out. So the j map, so the j nu should act should map k nu to n nu. So what it does, uh, you start with j n minus 1, which sends you here. And then you, uh, okay, so <laughs> maybe not the best notation. So j nu is, uh, it's a kind of a big uh, column of maps. So all of them start, so they all map k n minus 1 to n nu. So n, but n nu is this direct sum. So this column is, it corresponds to the uh, summons in this formula. So the first one is just j uh, n minus 1, which sends. Uh, so the value of this part is n, n minus 1. Now I, uh, what I will do, I will apply b2. So, so now I will first apply b2 and then apply j0. So that will get me to uh, n1. So b2, n minus 1. H0, and then B2, N minus 1, B2, 0, J1, and so on. So you, you, you have more and more Bs, and then you have uh, the appropriate J at the end. So if this is N minus 1, this should be N minus 2. And so this will be the last uh, J N minus 3. And now, yeah, I'm sorry, so, so this 
Yes, as a vector space, it's, it's the old n, but as a. Uh, you just it I, I want to forget the action of the ZN group, but I will modify the action of the, later I will modify the action of the, uh, um, of the torus uh, U1 plus U1 plus U1 to the N. So, so that torus will act on this space in a slightly, in a slightly different way. But other than, other than that, uh, uh, as a vector space, it's old uh, space N. And this space is not the old space K, it's, the, it's only a component of the old space K. Anyway, so the, you, this is what you do, and then for the i mu, it's just uh, it's a it's a row now n minus three i uh, zero i n minus one. So when you multiply i nu times g nu, uh, you'll get uh, a collection of products of this form. Maybe I screwed up with some, should be some property relative shift somewhere. Starts at i0. Uh, and then you use these individual equations, dress them with products of Bs, and then uh, you'll, you'll, you'll get this kind of picture. So I nu is a map from n nu to k n minus uh, one. Okay, so uh, yes, I, I, you're right. I still need b's, right? So b's are so these are wrong b's. Uh, uh, they like they make wrong honey. So these are so let's let's use the right b's. Okay, so n n minus one is actually mapped by i n n minus one to where it should. Uh, and then i uh, so n n minus two I will map. Okay, so I put b's on the left. So here it is. B two uh, n minus two and so on. So the last one will be i zero. So I zero sends uh, N zero to K zero, and then I use the product of almost all these to get me to, to K minus one. So I zero, B two, zero, B two one, all the way to B two, N minus two. So B2, yes, so I need to use B2 and minus 2 as the last B because that's what, where it, what sends me to K and minus 1. So uh, you can guess actually this formula by simply, once you believe me that, that that's, this is the right uh, formula for, for the product of Bs, uh, Then just compute the commutator by using the Leibniz rule. Uh, so and use this use this equation. So the commutator of b1 n minus one with the product of uh, all these matrices. It's a sum of uh, many terms, so you just push, you, uh, so you push B1 through this product of B2s using this relation, because this, this relation allows you to, to exchange the order modular the price, which is a product of I and J, and then this product of I and J will precisely produce the, the correction term. So it's a sum of uh, expressions where you have B2, 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 several them and then ij and then another product of b2 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 uh, n minus 2 n minus 1 so uh, here the first b2 is always have n minus 1 and the here the last b2 is always always has uh, this su uh, superscript n minus 2 okay so that's the map it's a map uh, which uh, um, 
So I want to interpret the surface defect as a class of cohomology, equivalent cohomology on, on the ordinary modulus plus instantons. Uh, period. So I want to interpret the surface effect as a, as a cohomology, as a equivalent, equivalent cohomology class, uh, as a kind of a generalized Donaldson observable, if you like. And now my definition is that this observable is a push forward of one, of a map of one module space to another module space. So this is kind of a geometric. We will use this. We will use, uh, so uh, this is needed for kind of physical justification that uh, we are computing the expectation value of some operator, but we will actually use the first definition that it's an integral of one over the different modular space. Now, how are we going to use it? So over the modular space uh, k nu and mu, we're integrating something complicated because it's we integrate the result of integrating along the fibers of this projection. So instead, we'll of course integrate something simple on 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 the covering modular space, on the modular space m defect. Uh, but. The reason why I explain this is that I need to explain the, what happens in the limit when epsilon 2 goes to 0. This is the, li the limit when the integration over the modulus, ordinary modulus per instance, gets frozen. It gets uh, saturated by a contribution of one limit, so so-called limit shape configuration. And uh, so, so the, 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 the wave function which we are after is the integral along the fiber of this projection over the specific point on the modulus space of uh, ordinary instantons. So that's why I need this, uh, this picture. OK, to make the long So uh, I guess what I want to explain is that this chainsaw quiver, which you get by straightforward application of orbifold projection, leads to, in a complicated way, to another quiver uh, variety which uh, encodes the uh, the wave function which we need so so we don't mm. okay so let's try to see it in a picture way so here is the modular spaces m k m when k varies k1 so we have some, some small modular space for k equals 1. And then we have a bigger modular space for k equals 2, and a bigger space for k equals 3, and so on. And then on top of these modular spaces, we have now even more complicated modular spaces. So defects. So these are the modular space and defect. Now, uh, in the fully equivalent theory, or in the, in the omega deformed theory, meaning that you have the parameters epsilon 1, epsilon 2, your calculation is, instead of integration, you, be, you, you, you uh, now sum over the fixed points. And actually, the fixed points so the summation, so integration becomes the summation of the fixed points. And the fixed points on this modular space and the fixed points on this modular space are the same. Sorry, not on this modular space. The mo fixed points on this modular space are the same as the fixed points on the, uh, on the big modular space of instantons of which this was a Z invariant locus. But now we want to compare these fixed points to these fixed points. So uh, so the fixed points analysis. OK, so on. So MK and 
Zn. T. So this is my torus T. As a set, it's just a set of T fixed points on, on the ordinary modulus space of instantons of large isoton charge. And these are collections of N Young diagrams, lambda alpha i. Alpha goes from 1 to N. And the total size, so the total sum over alpha and over i is equal to k. Now, uh, so, so, so a collection of Young diagrams is a point somewhere here, somewhere upstairs. Now I want to say that this point is mapped to one of the fixed points of the torus section downstairs. Except that the torus downstairs acts in a slightly different way. The parameters q1, q2, and e to the a, so I, I, I went back to my old notations. So now the, uh, the, the match between the parameters is as, follow, as follows. I will actually denote my parameters upstairs as q1, q2 to the power n, uh, 1 over n. Uh, and here I will use Q2. So I shift, I'll, I'll shift my Coulomb parameters according to the way I embed my cyclic group into the uh, framing group. And so this is how I break the symmetry between different eigen, eigen spaces of the framing, framing space. This is the answer to Misha's question from, from, uh, from last time. So. So this, from these parameters, I produce the ordinary parameters q1, q2, to the a alpha, which will be the, pr the parameters for the torus action on the, the modulus space of defect. Yes, yes, yes. So, so this whole thing replaces e to the i theta alpha. So this whole thing, it's a, it's a redefinition. Correct. This is more natural in the five-dimensional theory. Yes. But this is some auxiliary thing which we do when we compute the characters. In the end, we will only need the, what is written in the exponent. So, so the, the, uh, the parameter of the four-dimensional theory in this notation would be A alpha plus alpha over N epsilon 2. That's the physical parameter. Uh, and so here, what I mean, mean to say is that the parameter upstairs is epsilon 2 divided by N and parameter epsilon 1. But because we, we implicitly make the map z2 goes to z2 to the n, it is natural to replace the, the torus, the rotational uh, angle by its nth, nth power. So that's, that's, this is what we do here. And so to this data, which is, which is one of the points here, one of the fixed points on one of these defect modular spaces, I will now associate a specific fixed point on the modular space of the uh, uh, ordinary instantons with charge k minus 1. And um, here is uh, how we do it. Well, um, let's see. So let's. So let me introduce the map. Uh, so it's a map from the space of colors to the space of representations. It uh, looks silly, but it's. Uh, I once got stuck to this notation. It's very hard to, to change it. And you, you can change this map. You can change this map to any one-to-one -one map between these two sets. Uh, uh, but in, 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 uh, in drawing this picture, I assume the, the map which was just. So, uh, 
So this is the way of, it's a map which has, relates the eigenvalues of this torus to the representations of the cyclic group. And now uh, uh, let's look at the characters. Okay, so the characters, so we have the space uh, K, uh, which we split into the is typical components of the cyclic group action. So now let me compute the character for the fixed point. Let me compute the character of the uh, component K omega. So what it is, it's the sum over all alpha from 1 to n, e to the A alpha, K2 to the alpha over n. So this is keeping in uh, this notation. And then the sum over all i and j, which belong to the partition lambda, q1 to i minus 1, q2 to the j minus 1 over n, with the condition that the n parity of this box plus the n parity of the uh, corresponding color is equal to omega. So the, the requirement is that alpha plus j minus 1 is, is equal to omega mod n. So this is to be compared with the formula for the old uh, character of k before taking the projection. So chan k was the sum to the a alpha. So to the, uh, ij lambda alpha. So now what, what I changed, I changed this notation. I changed q2 to q2 over uh, power one, one, 1 over n. And I changed a alpha to that thing. So, uh, so it, 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 you sum now over all boxes? Yes, I sum over all. Uh, so now the boxes which contribute, uh, the, the, uh, so you take every nth, every nth column. Uh, so if, if if the box ij contributes to the sum, then the box ij uh, plus n, if it belongs to the partition, also contributes. So let's say, suppose, so suppose this is the partition lambda 1. According to my, my coloring, this box has zn color is 0. So it will con this whole, the first column will contribute to k0. The second column will contribute to K1. The third column will contribute to K2, and so on. For the lambda 2, the first column will contribute to K1. The second will contribute to K2, and so on. And for the uh, uh, so the last one, uh, not last one, lambda n. So for lambda n, for the last one, the first column uh, contributes to, again, to k0. Sorry, uh, sorry, sorry. The, it's the, the first one contributes to k minus 1. Okay. And so that's, that's why k minus 1 is important. Uh, um, well, so now uh, I will also make an additional twist where I uh, shift the uh, k omega by q2 to the minus omega over n. So that's my notation. And then, uh, so this can be rewritten in terms of, so in this way you get only uh, with this, uh, with this overall multiplication, the, the powers of you only get integer powers of Q2. So all fractional powers of Q2 will, will disappear because of this uh, requirement. So uh, you can now compute Kn minus 1, the character of Kn minus 1. This is sum alpha from 1 to n, alpha. So 
we now need to, to think about this condition. Uh, so sum i and j belongs to lambda alpha with the condition that alpha plus j minus 1 is equal to n minus 1 mod n. So it means that it's n minus 1 plus some integer that we call capital J times n. And I claim that uh, this integer j uh, can be anything starting with 1. So q1 to the i minus 1, and then q2 to j minus 1. So, uh, so from this, we can actually read off a partition. Capital J is an integer, yes, any, any, any integer. Uh, so uh, in other words, we substitute now. So this is the formula for little j in terms of capital J. So little j is uh, n minus alpha plus capital N times j minus 1. Since alpha is uh, uh, sorry, something is wrong. Alpha. So uh, it is. Uh, so I want to say that this is equal to you know, the sum over alpha from one to n, e to the a alpha, and then the sum i capital J belonging to the new partition lambda alpha capital lambda alpha uh, q one to the power i minus one q two to the power j minus one. So out of so out of it out of uh, n partitions lambda little lambda alpha I now produce n big partitions capital lambda alpha and the formula is uh, it, it's actually so it is not easy to write the formula for the uh, lambda capital lambda alpha i so the, the number of uh, the length of the row but it is easy to write a formula for the for the dual partition, so the number, the length of the column, and that's uh, lambda alpha and j minus uh, alpha plus one. So I, I think I I lost one somewhere in my formulas. J minus one. Yes, uh, this is where I lost it. So this should be alpha minus one. Alpha minus one, because so this is this is the C alpha. This is the map. So this is so this is explicit formula. So the the uh, the new partition lambda capital alpha t subscript uh, j is the old partition in which you shift the uh, the uh, number of the column. So you count them uh, n times faster, and then there is some shift depending on the, the color number. So the uh, the question is that, well, not the question, but the sort of the the difficulty is that there are this map from little lambda to capital lambda is not one to one; it's many to one. In fact, it's infinitely to one, infinitely many to one. And what this what this infinity means, it means that it, it, it represents precisely the fact that we are summing over all instanton charges of the two-dimensional Siegel model, which lives on the surface of the surface defect. So this infinity is essentially uh, all two-dimensional instanton configurations given a fixed four-dimensional instant configuration. So the capital lambda alpha is a, is a configuration, uh, it's a point on the modular space of uh, instantons on R4. So it's here, so it's that one of these points here. 
And little lambda is a, is a configuration on the sp space of, homogeneous space of defects, or of this instance with defect. So uh, let, let's, so there are two sources of this infinity. And one is the following, that if you look at the first, the very first column, so capital uh, lambda 1 transpose. This is lambda n minus. So the question is, if you know capital lambda 1, what are the choices for the li little lambda? Well, uh, for the partition, Yes, so for alpha equals to 1, so lambda n. So this is uh, less than equal to So here you have n minus 1 integer, which can grow arbitrarily high, which you can add on top of the, of, uh, on top of the uh, four dimensional configuration to produce the configuration of the defect. For, for the second color, so lambda 2, the first row is lambda n minus 1. Transpose. So here, in addition, you get true. Uh, so you have n minus two integers. These integers, these are integers which are based on inequalities, but there are uh, still many integers. And then, and so and so on. So you get uh, n times n minus one over two integers which roughly represent the, the uh, uh, classification of quasi-maps uh, of genus 0 into the flag variety, complete flag variety. So these are the, uh, the reason why you get more integers than just, than just incertain numbers. It's, uh, um, well, in some sense, you're already familiar with that. In, in the four-dimensional case, we had one instant on number, but the actual fixed points were classified by all ways of partitioning this number into the collection of n partitions. So there were many, many, many integers. Uh, so here, the way to understand this triangular structure is to uh, think of the flag variety as an equivalent variety. So it's a product of, uh, so it's a, a quiver. that type, and so you have uh, the gauge group of increasing of the rank. This is, so this is the rank of the, of the gauge group, which you uh, can use in, if, you write to, if you want to represent the flag variety, the toric variety. And so in this, in this toric description, you will have exactly that many integers in describing, describing the quasi-maps uh, to, to flags. But unfortunately, or fortunately, interestingly, this is not the whole story. So in addition to the possibility of gluing, uh, you know, adding the extra columns of, uh, uh, to the capital lambda partitions to produce little lambdas, we also have some amb ambiguity in adding things for uh, at the int intermediate uh, values of j. So, uh, so let me draw this picture a bit more carefully. So suppose, so this is lambda alpha t, so it's a Young diagram of this kind. So what I, what I just described here was that I can add, so in order, in order to produce out of this diagram, the Young diagram for little lambda, what I need to do, I need to separate
So I need to separate the columns, put them at the distance of n apart, This is now n, n, and so on. And now I need to enumerate all possible ways of, of gluing something in between so that, that it remains a partition. And this is also consistent between different alphas. So what I discussed here is the is a, is a simple part where, so the first I can add n minus alpha columns. So I can add the kind of partition which can grow, grow indefinitely uh, uh, to the bottom. So these are integers which are un unbounded above, but bounded below and obeying some inequalities. But there are also things which you can add here at the right corner. And so these are called jump. So there are some these are jumps. And so the difficulty of, the, uh, of making this evaluation is to actually make the sum of the jumps. And uh, this is what I want to explain, uh, provided I have time. What, how much time do I have? Uh, okay. okay, good. Using what theory? Well, this is aimed to actually avoid, so in conformal field theory, if you know that, uh, so this object uh, is indeed some matrix element or some trace or some matrix, uh, 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 well, in a, in a, for the pure n equals 2, this is some matrix element in some presentation of um, uh, in, uh For n equals 2 star theory, this would be some it's a, a trace of an indefining operator. Uh, unfortunately, just knowing that doesn't help very much because to compute, so you need to compute this intertwining operator. You need to compute the matrix elements and then you compute the trace. It doesn't help very much. It's, uh, so, well, for, uh, so in the n equals to, to star case, for an integer value of the ratio of the mass parameter to the uh, remaining covariant parameter, if, if this ratio is an integer, you can represent the vertex operator using a finite number of screening charges. And so then you can get the uh, senko fatiev type integral representation for this trace, uh, from which then, you, by subtle point limit, you'll get some expressions for, the, for this wave function in the form of the beta and Zatz equations for some ratio of theta functions. Uh, but the number of variables in this beta and Zatz equations will depend on, on this ratio. And uh, it's kind of hard, it's hard to extrapolate the formula from when you have that many variables, more precisely that many variables times n times n minus 1 over 2 to the complex values of this ratio. It's, uh, and, and, and here I'm trying to not to make this assumption yet. Or, so the toda is the limit when epsilon 3 goes to infinity, and the elliptic curve degenerates in some correlated way. So also it is not, it has not been possible to, to, to guess from, from those better equations, the equations for toda. Nevertheless, I claim that it is possible to make a sum over jumps and essentially reduce the the, the only summation remaining will be the summation over this part, which is uh, uh, kind of under by much better control. And so that summation, well, it will turn, down, turn out to be not, so it will turn out that there is a way of re resumming this expression uh, somehow similar to the uh, map between Donaldson and Thomas to, and to Padharipani Thomas theory. Where instead of instead of this direction, these young diagrams will actually grow in in, in a kind of opposite direction, and that will give the uh, for the total it will give the uh, formula by Hartshoff and Lemmy. Which is 
kind of, which is a re reasonable formula, but, but not, now that I, I have some experience with these formulas, this is a kind of reasonable type formula. Uh, for the, uh, and this, uh, um, this method also works for the uh, theory which, would, which corresponds to the uh, UN gauge theory with 2n fundamental flavors, which is more interesting than to other 2n. So this is some, it's a, it's a kind of a spin chain with uh, arbitrary spins. Uh, uh, however, for the Kalogera, it's still, this is still too complicated. So, so I will not talk about Kalogera today. Um, but I want to, so I just want to make, to, exp to explain how to, to get rid of this complication and, and uh, re pre represent the, f the, the final result in a manageable form. So the idea is, the, not the idea, the, the point is that the, uh, the, there is another queer variety which is somehow hidden, which is somewhere on the kind of outskirts of the, of the chainsaw quiver, uh, which governs the uh, disintegration. And uh, so this is the following quiver space. So now uh, the maps are the following. So this is more like uh, what you call uh, a hand saw. So it's more like a hand saw. Quiver. Hand saw. Right? So th these are the teeth of this hand saw. So now what are the spaces? Uh, so the L spaces they are all one dimensional and they actually are uh, the, so these are actually n spaces but shifted so as vector space they are one dimensional vector space and they are actually one dimensional representations of the framing torus but they are twisted by the action of the rotational torus and the twist is uh, by lambda uh, omega minus one transposed uh, n minus omega. So this is, uh, if you think in, in terms of the contents of the boxes, this is uh, if the n space, the original n space was, was cris corresponding, corresponds to the uppermost uh, uh, cell in the Young diagram, this space corresponds to the, the first cell which you can add to the Young diagram at the, at the in, the first, in the first row. So this is the L space, and this is the N space. As representations of the torus. Now the V spaces, they uh, carry information about jumps and about uh, part, of this, part of the things which you can add, add here. Now W and N, what are these? Um, I need to remind you about the tautological complex over the modular space of instantons. Uh, so let's go back to the so let's go back to this picture. So there is a complex. K goes to K plus K plus N goes to K. So this map is uh, B2 plus B1 uh, plus J. And this map is, uh, sorry, I should write it like a column. So B2, B1, J. And here is B1 minus B2, I. So the product of these two maps is equal to zero, thanks to the DHM equation. 
And uh, the stability condition says that uh, this map is surjective. So, so the homology of this complex are trivial in, in this term, and h1 and h0 are non-trivial in general. And we can compute the, uh, the character of the differences of these cohomologies. We can compute the individual as well for the fixed points. And this is equal to uh, churn n minus churn k 1 minus q1 1 minus q1 1 minus q2 churn k. And now if you do it for the, uh, for the torus fixed point, The, so this is equal to something I should I put plus as plus minus as minus. So S plus is the sum of the contents of the uh, uh, cells which you can add to the Young diagram. So these are uh, the contents of the of things which can be added. And S minus is up to the shift is what can be removed. So this is the minus the contents of the uh, black squares. And the content, so but the content is A alpha plus epsilon 1 i minus 1 plus epsilon 2 j minus 1. For the, when the box is i j in the Young diagram lambda alpha. OK, so now uh, you can actually, uh, so you see this very bottom box is uh, actually it's, it's exponential of its content is precisely the eigenvalue corresponding to that space. So this can be written. This, so it's an identity. It's an identity. It's equal to the sum of the characters of L, L spaces from 0 to n minus 1 plus, plus the character of a certain space which I call W times 1 minus q1. So the w space is the space spanned by the boxes in the, uh, in the finite column, which you can add to the right. So this, uh, this is the so this is, this is w space. So w, chain w is the sum of all these things. So these are. As characters, these are uh, geometric geometric series of. Well, we, we don't know a priori what are the lengths for the uh, for the random Young diagram. This could be arbitrary, but for the limit shape, namely the diagram which the collection of Young diagrams which can which dominate in the epsilon to going to zero limit. These are actually all they all have dimension one length one. So the, the limit shape Young diagram it has this hierarchy. Uh, mica type uh, shape where these things are one dimensional. These lengths are exponentially decaying. So uh, so that's the space W. So so the spaces which are put in the rectangles. These are the spaces which are which which read off the uh, instanton configuration on the uh, base instanton modular space. And now these V spaces are what uh, enumerates the difference between little lambda and capital lambda. So V omegas measure the difference between little lambda and capital lambda. Finally, so the, the, now the, the point is that when the integral, so there is a queer variety associated to this picture, namely the space of linear maps uh, uh, which are placed according to these arrows. And then we again we integrate one equivariant integral of one over this space. Uh, and now the trick is that there, is, there are two stabili stability conditions which one, one can impose. The first stability condition is that you uh, so the stability one is that the space V omega 
is the span. Sorry, I forgot. So at each. Uh, So it's, it's an invariant. It's, it's what's spent by acting with B1 omega on the uh, uh, image I0, I1, Im minus 2. So here I omega minus 1, L omega minus 1 plus B2, so this is B2, 1, B2, N minus 2, uh, B2, omega minus 1, B omega minus 1. And so, so this is the one stability, uh, stability condition. And in this case, what, uh, what the spaces are, so V1 contains a piece of W. And so these are the jumps. So, so V1, so to build V1, you take a subset of, of the possible uh, uh, finite columns you can add to the Young diagram. And so that's, that spans the space V1. And there is a piece of V1 which you, could, which you build by uh, taking the image. This, one, this is one dimensional space. You take a vector, which is the image of this. Uh, uh, map i0, and then you can add, act on it uh, a few times by the B1 operator. So that corresponds to uh, growing the column built on L0, on L0 space. So L0, B1, L0, B1 square L0, and so on. So nobody knows where it stops, where it stops at some point. And so that, that produces space V1. And then you take a piece of part of that and transport to the next level V2. And you can add to it now something which is built out of L1. So that will be for the second Young diagram, you can add something here. And you can take a subset of jumps. So the jumps for V2 will be smaller than for V1. And so on. And so that will reproduce precisely, precisely the fixed points and the contribution of those fixed points in the, in the original expression. So why, the, by, by the way, I forgot to say that, uh, I mean, I didn't explain, but the, the whole point is that using QQ characters and they, uh, they orbifold projection versions, projected orbifold projection, we can prove that the sum of uh, this, this uh, sum over all instant on charges the omega k omega integral of one of a defect. So this guy uh, is a function of uh, chi of x and lambda and q and a. So it solves this guy solves the equation m epsilon one epsilon two lambda d by d lambda chi plus the Hamiltonian of Toda, the period of Toda equals to zero. So that, that's one, it's actually it's a one line, comp line computation but, uh, if you have all the tools uh, in place. So that's why we're, we're struggling with this expression. That's why we want to uh, com compute this sum, sum more explicitly because that will give a formula for the solution of this equation. And then in the epsilon two going to zero limit, the first simplification is that the, uh, once you know how to descend this, this integral down to the modular space of ordinary instantons, on the modular space of ordinary instantons, the limit epsilon 2 to 0 freezes you to one, one, one fixed point. So instead of the whole uh, multitude of Young diagrams, you have only one master Young diagram which contributes. Uh, and so the, the shape of that one, young, one master diagram is determined by the equation for, the, for this, precisely for these variables, for this data, which is the equation, which is the functional difference equation, y of x plus epsilon 1 plus lambda to the, to the n 
is equal to the nth degree polynomial where y is uh, y of x is the following function. It's a product over L from 0 to n minus 1, x minus capital A sub L, and then products of W of W. So capital A, uh, so if this is e to the A omega, this is e to the capital A omega. So, so, so capital A's are the original, original Coulomb primaries are shifted by some integer. And then this W is this, uh, these are the contents of the things that we sit at the right, right most uh, uh, columns. So of course, so the solution, so for this equation, the number of W's, this set, this set W is actually, actually infinite. So it's an infinite product, which is regularized as a gamma function. Uh, but uh, um, so this equation contains all the, all, all the information about the positions of these zeros. And now, so once this is fixed, we take the integral over this uh, queer variety. And it looks complicated because we have two kinds of two types of fixed points here, the ones where the v space is built out of the contribution of l0, l1, and ln minus 1, which is a good part. But there's also this bad part where you have some part of w which is, which, is, uh, which is messing up the formula. And this w is kind of nasty. You don't want to deal with that. So for finite epsilon 2, uh, we have a, so y is an observable. It depends on, uh, uh, so, so it's y is it's an observable for each collection of, for each collection of young diagrams. It's some pr rational function which knows about the contents of, of these boxes and these boxes. Okay, so it's got some zeros and poles. And, uh, the QQ character is a different expression where you shift this by epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 and view it as an operator. And the statement is that under the expectation value, the expectation value of that operator is a polynomial. Now, when epsilon 2 goes to 0, the statistics of the, I mean, the uh, kind of the energy versus entropy considerations uh, in the sum of the partitions tell you that, that th there is a uh, do dominating, dominating partition of very large. It's a dominating, a dominating one, yes. So, so, so the W in this product formula is the value, so, it's a, so W is a kind of a limit in the probabilistic sense, epsilon 2 to 0, of the expression of the form A alpha plus epsilon 1 times I minus 1 plus epsilon 2 lambda alpha I. When for, for some alpha between 1 and n, and i, which is an arbitrary integer. So what happens is that when epsilon, epsilon 2 goes to 0, but the typical lambda, typical uh, uh, length of the row is very large. It goes like 1 over epsilon 2. And uh, so it statistically, it assumes some, some value, which is determined from this equation. You can represent this equation in the more familiar form by writing this as a ratio of two entire functions where q of x is the uh, product. So q of x is the product of x minus w times some product of gamma functions, which actually disappear in the limit, in epsilon 2 going to zero limits. So some product of one of the gammas uh, x minus a over epsilon 1. So, well, it's, it's, ob it's obvious you can form some ratio of gamma functions, which will produce this polynomial. And uh, now, in terms of the q function, this equation will read simply that q of x plus 
epsilon 1 plus lambda to the 2 n q of x minus epsilon 1 is equal to the polynomial t times q of x. And so if you, in particular, if you substitute uh, w as 1 of, for, for x, the right-hand side will vanish, and you'll get some beta-like equation, but it will be an infinite order of beta, beta equations. So it's not very nice. OK, so the point is now that the value of this integral, which we're computing, does not change when we change the stability condition. Uh, at, at, uh, so at some level, this is just a manipulation with the contours. You can write this as a contour integral. And so the, the, the trick is to pass from this stability condition to another stability condition, where you basically reverse the errors. And when you say that VW is the image of V1 dagger omega, and then this is J omega L omega plus B2 omega plus 1 dagger V omega plus 1. And uh, uh, because, so, so now you start building these spaces from the right as opposed to from the left, and they all come from now from the L spaces. And so that, uh, uh, so, so that's uh, how you get a drastic reduction in the number of uh, uh, residues, a number of fixed points. So for the, for the second stability condition, yes? So, uh, so I yes. Okay. So, so uh, uh, initially, uh, okay. So we had we had some uh, the the modular spaces which we were studying. There were space of solutions to some of some matrix equations. Uh, matrix equations modular the uh, modular action of, of symmetry group. And when I was describing the, these equations, I only wrote the, uh, the algebraic equations, holomorphic equations, and said that I will divide by the action of the general linear group. But when I do that, I have to, expl I have to specify a stability condition. Instead, I could have written a real moment map equation, so supply additional equations, equations like B1, B1 dagger plus B2, B2 dagger plus I, I dagger minus J dagger J, and put here some constant times the unit operator. So this is so this is the real moment mom map equation for the ordinary addition equation. So this parameter zeta, which which is in the right hand side. The, the real moment map value. Uh, in these cohomological computations, you can vary continuously. And the answer doesn't change uh, when you vary it. But uh, the uh, form of the final result depends on some discrete mm -hmm. data, like the sign of this parameter. Because uh, uh, when you do the, when you compute the integral over the, over the quotient, which is my space is, my space is the quotient by the action of some group, uh, I can represent this integral as the, uh, at some intermediate stage, as an integral over, of some rational, of some meromorphic differential form over the half dimensional cycle in the Lie algebra of the maximal torus of the group I, I divide by. It's a, Lie it's a complexified Lie algebra. And the choice of the contour actually depends on the sign of this parameter. So for one sign, I close. So it's, I mean, this, the Lie algebra is a non-compact non -compact space. So I have to close my contour somewhere to, to express the answer as a sum of residues. And where I close my contour depends on the sign of the zeta. So when I change the sign of zeta, when I change the stability parameter, I effectively change the way where I'm closing the counter. And if, my, I, I, if 
my problem is such that there is no contribution at infinity, then of course the answer will not change. Uh, so there's, in other words, there's no wall crossing phenomenon. Uh, for the pure n equals 2 theory, this is the case. The, this differential form actually decays at, infi at infinity sufficiently fast, so there is no uh, contribution from infinity. For the theory with matter, this is not the case, so it's more complicated. Uh, but now it may happen that the number of poles of this uh, meromorphic form for one choice of the counterclosure is different than for another choice of counterclosure. And geometrically, what it, what it means is that for one stability, for the one's choice of a stability chamber, you have the you have a lot of fixed points of a torus section, and so you have a, you have to do a lot of work in computing the integral. While for another choice, you have very few, and this is what happens for the periodic torus. Uh, I guess the, uh, in what's the simplest uh, lower dimensional example of this phenomenon? Uh, I don't know. Maybe uh, it's probably not a simplest example, but uh, just what comes to mind. There was there was a fashionable activity in the early 90s, uh, which was called landau gisberg kalabiau correspondence, when people were trying to relate the Know, some complicated com computations uh, f uh, in, in, in mirror symmetry involving you know, periods on Calabi-Yau, uh, which are Calabi-Yau hypersurfaces and projective spaces. On, uh, by some change of parameters, they were related to computations in Gepner minimal models, which look like, which were related to landau gisberg models. So that's, that's a similar idea, that you vary, you vary the phi Leopold's term, the, 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 moment, the level of the moment map, and you get a problem with of different complexity so on the other side. But it's the same, the result is the same. So the formula uh, for the psi function, actually, so chi, uh, so, uh, no, for the chi, for the chi, there is no simplification. Yeah, don't, yeah, yeah, there is no good formula for chi. So for chi, when epsilon 2 goes to zero limit, there is a simplification, which is 1 over epsilon 2 times the effective crystal super potential. And then psi, which is a function of x, a, epsilon 1, and lambda. And so for this guy, the formula is uh, of. So this is the Kharchov Lebedev type formula, except that uh, in the in the papers they, 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 they would write it as an integral uh, with some uh, gamma functions in the kernel, and in, and here it it still appears as a sum over the uh, some integers with. Um, Some inequalities of D. Mm -hmm. So there is a product uh, well the way the way the way they write it. So, okay. So this is the
then the last uh, row. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. That's my point. That the Yes. So now in the in the queue in the queue. Who is the parameter? Sorry. You say that your site depends on the parameter of the Right. Yes, of course. Well, but it's not a formula. So for the uh, uh, the yeah the math. so it's one abstract object. Object. So it's. No, this is this is the stand. Okay, so the brother man Rettingov, they show they say. The it doesn't matter where the, where the formula comes from. This equation, yeah. and you take the epsilon two goes to zero. The only way the solution can behave is in this way. Uh, uh, so there is no microscopic reason for that. So for them, it's just the equation is proven. Then this is the limit. They just. Uh, no, they don't have, well, so, so this equation implies some w, which, do, which does not depend on x. There is some prefactor which depends on x. I will solve the, will be the eigenfunction, the eigenvalue which depends on w. This is just algebra, just w can be. There is nothing. What I can't explain it in all detail because for, I mean I didn't write the formula. It's a formula for chi, and the formula factorization explicitly. Uh, preparations, but I didn't explain all the all. The um, so, and here I didn't explain all the steps. Formula uh, five variables. I get a discrete sum. So integers, essentially integers, the poles of the gamma function. So this is a formula obtained. The formula is not exactly that, but uh, you can actually find it in Kharkov and Lebedev. They Why I'm so for, for 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 long for the long time getting a complicated formula for, for analysis, which did, which look much more complicated version of of the of the uh, uh, when you have uh, many more in, in denominator and so on and so forth. So took me some time to, to realize counter deformation argument which relates one. Unfortunately, this does not simplify uh, argument drastic simplification for the theory. So I don't expect the future to write a similar formula, unfortunately. That's Yeah, there is nothing to compare it to. Naively, I mean, if you, you, to get the formula, uh, replace every object by the same object whose argument is shifted by the uh, the, uh, the mass of the object. So you put replace gamma divided by gamma anything. By epsilon three, epsilon 
same here. Uh, it only captures part of the full expression. It's not the full. Uh, there is for that, namely, uh, if you look at the simple, the two particle problem, one dimension, kind of answer which had approach produce transform of the box trap as you can n equals to two this equation is four. But yes this is Unfortunately, for okay, let's call it okay. So x below um, So if you make the then the equation on Q becomes which is identical to the the two by but and 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 remember that was the limit shape equation why For the n equals to so this equation um, sum over partition elliptic parameter Box is minus j. So it's a different way of, of uh, measuring the content of a box. What are the upper limits of sigma? Three, four. It's it's uh, well because not just uh, I mean there is some reason for that. So that I uh, okay. so now. Uh, so the equation that this infinite sum is a polynomial of degree m x. So now, just to make contact with some other discussion we had, if you write this equation in terms of the Q operator, so you still define the Q. We still run uh, an entire function q such that y is a ratio. So this equation is equivalent to the following cubic like that, that equation, namely q of, uh, well, it might be Function is not symmetric. So here we look for functions q 
for which the zeros have this shape. So the zeros give as a alpha plus epsilon 1 times n minus 1 plus something as small as uh, i goes to 2. So al alpha goes from 1 to n, i goes from 1 to 2. So there are different classes of solutions of this equation. And for the uh, problem for which epsilon 1 is a plant constant and epsilon 3 is a coupling constant, so the coefficient of the uh, rice cross function is epsilon 3 times epsilon 3 plus epsilon 1, and the coefficient of the last thing is epsilon 1 squared. So here, the symmetry between epsilon 3 and epsilon 1 is broken. So that's shown by the fact that we look for solutions for, for which the zeros asymptotically form arithmetic progression with step epsilon 1. But the equation is symmetric on the epsilon 1 and epsilon 3. And, uh, okay, so, but the point is that now, if you have this equation for Q, this equation doesn't look like a Fourier transform of a... Uh, uh, if you want to get this uh, solution of the two-body uh, of the Monet equation, This is the Lamey equation expanded in the Fourier series of x. So you can again try to write the uh, piece q. Well, if you just naively Fourier transform, it will get some infinite order difference equation for, for the Fourier transform of psi. Uh, but it doesn't look, it will, it will not look like anything uh, of this sort. So, and, and, and the formula which uh, is instead of counting uh, proposes involves the ratios of, so involves the ratios of q divided by q divided by epsilon t. So it's not the shift which defines the y function. So the y function is q of x divided by q of x minus epsilon 1. But rather these ratios, so you shift by, by, by another parameter. And uh, so even the Fourier transform of that is not the solution of one equation. There's still some dressing by, by the analog of the jumps. So uh, something else, else is needed, or maybe not, maybe that's just the way it is. That's, the, uh, that's how to create this for at least. Uh, but at least for, for Toda and for the spin chain, uh, this trick with the uh, uh, wall cross with going to different stability chamber does simplify the, the, the wave function. Границу, как это называется? Границу главного функции. 
там, где как раз пятки происходят. Если вот, с такого выражения просто дефиниции, то это очень много. Ну, может быть хороший, может быть красный. Альшанский с кем-то занимался. Он сложно не Мне всегда говорили, что речь вот этого буква Хи, когда Сома, ее можно считать а, как сведения наблюдаемые, но уже в теории без них да? Правильно, да. А да. что это наблюдаемое? То есть она как-то отводная, через эти функции вылетит или через что-то? Ну хорошо, то есть это вы хотите поверить, что я сейчас написал вам явную формулу для, для, для наблюдателей. Значит, вот этот полярный дефект это такая вещь. которые фиксированы на последние компоненты. Ну, значит, я вам написал эту формулу уже не по неподвижной точке, тогда это будет уже какие-то просто числа. И вы можете написать это как какой-то класс кремологии, тогда это будут какие-то классы чем-то. Чего ну, в общем, так или иначе формула такая.
разбрать эти инфекционные Это что? А, это весело. Весело, да? Вот, то есть тут э, мы суммируем по всем возможным маленьким лямбдам лямбда, и данных лямбдам, у которых индекс э, э, ну там, по-моему, не конечно, здесь размещен, а далеко не все, а сюда нет лямбда. Вот это пространство V-омега, оно измеряет, в какой момент у вас лямбда, вот у вас лямбда омега, вот лямбда омега, все это дела, да? Даже нас здесь относится на цифру. Больше на лямбда N. Ты считаешь, что подойдет точку пропитивного пространства, у тебя может сумма машин, что-то 
если сделать, скажем, слов transition, ты вместо маленького расстояния большим пространством пройти, ты получишь, наоборот, векторное расстояние большого размера, на маленьком пространстве, на нем будет мало подлежать точек, а ты будет то же самое. Подвижные точки на многообразии, которые несут группа, они как-то превращаются в подмножество валки прилив э, той группы, фактором по которой то просто исходное пространство являлось. Это такая, у нас есть некоторое пространство, вспомогательное пространство Y, мы делим по нашей группе G, потом берем подвижные точки действия другого, другой группы T. И это дело как-то связано с тем, что в алгебрии классифицированной максимальной моторе буквы G вот это множество представлено как некоторое подмножество. То есть подмножество вот здесь. То, что мы делаем, мы изучаем гомологии средней размерности дополнения. То, что мы интегрируем, мы интегрируем по некоторому циклу в этом дополнении переработку форму 106. Можно ли характеризовать этот цикл как-то и вариант, я не знаю. Но, наверное, можно. То есть, наверное, наверное, и соответствие между этими циклами и э, камерами стабильности в этом пространстве. Потому что этот фактор, говорит, по же можно брать по-разному. Зависит от выбора разных условий стабильности. И это отвечает тому, что здесь разные циклы. Наверное, можно. Возможно, какая-то будет теория типа теории стабильных оболочек. Да. А, микрофон там? Не, микрофон тут. А, Грекос, привет! 